taking a look at that report that has just come out, uh, obviously global food prices have been cited by uh, central banks around the world as a key concern. Looking at maize doubling in the year to April to uh, $319 per ton, uh, wheat rising 74% mm -hmm. to $336 per ton. What is influencing these price dynamics uh, at the moment? All right, the world's biggest global cereal producers are experiencing drought-like conditions. That's in the U.S., China, and parts of the EU. This time around differs from 2008. This time around, we're seeing the maize price increase surpass that of the other cereals. If you recall, in 2008, the rice price tripled. Over the past year, we've seen the maize pri price triple. And because of the di different dynamics in terms of cereal price increases, we expect Southern Africa and East Africa to be hardest hit, given that they're big, big consumers of maize, whereas last time around it was West Africa that was hard hit since it's a big consumer of rice. Looking at um, the East African economies, especially if you just look at Kenya, uh, the government there declaring um, a drought and food crisis. In fact, we had a case recently, a civil case, where um, the local uh, population actually took the government to court saying that they have a right to be free from hunger. How bad is the situation mm. in Kenya at this, at this stage? Uh, the situation in East Africa and Kenya in particular is quite dire. We actually had USAID release a report uh, late, uh, uh, earlier this week uh, on their famine early warning system network showing that it's, uh, the food security situation is deteriorating quite terribly in uh, Kenya and Ethiopia. If you look at the food inflation numbers for May, for instance, you see food inflation surged to 20% year in year. That's for Kenya. You've got Ethiopia's inflation that's jumped from the single digits in 2010, 9 to 20% region as well. So you definitely have food prices driving as a result you're seeing the government's putting in measures to try alleviate the rising cost of living. You had Kenya's uh, finance minister reduce the cost of importing uh, all three cereals just to ease the cost burden given that they're going to have to be importing a greater share of food that they consume locally due to the food shortfall locally. Looking at the measures that governments are putting in place, um, are central banks um, doing enough to curb inflation? And what is the correlation between food price inflation and the overall inflation index in these uh, key African economies? Um, with regards, let me answer your second question first. In terms of the influence of food inflation on the other um, um, subcategories in uh, the headline inflation number, it's a lot stronger in developing uh, countries. We've found that, or research has found that, for a one percentage increase in the food price, the feed, uh, feed uh, through of that into non food inflation is about 0.3 uh, percentage points compared to 0.15 in the developed part of the world. So there is a feed through as a result. In terms of what central banks are doing. We're already seeing tightening in most of our economies, including in Kenya, although we are of the opinion that they're not as bold as they could be at the Central Bank of Kenya. One argument could be that food inflation is driven by exogenous factors, but as I said at the beginning when I was answering this question, is that there is a strong feed through from food inflation into the other um, consumer goods. Oil trading at around $120 a barrel, still uh, just under that uh, today. What is the impact of uh, this high crude price on uh, input costs when it comes to production, given the fact especially that maize, 95% uh, of that is produced uh, on the continent for consumption? Two. True. The rising uh, oil price has, uh, well, we can speak to, of two effects. Firstly, as you know, fertilizer prices are strongly correlated to that of oil. So that's an important input, of course, for food production. If you've got high oil prices, the cost of production of food rises, and that feeds into the higher global food prices that we're already seeing. Secondly, distribution costs also go up in the continent in terms of moving around food from one region of the, to another. As we know, in Kenya's case, most of the food is grown in the highlands. That's in the western part of the country. If the cost of distributing that food to other hard hit parts of the country, particularly in the east, is uh, costly, then you're going to see that burden rise as well in those particular countries. What is your outlook for the price uh, for 2011 for maize and uh, wheat and rice, given um, the price movements we've seen to date? All right, as um, we mentioned earlier, maize prices are the ones we expect to see the biggest increase in 2011 going into 2012. 
and that's going to feed through into southern Africa and East Africa. The southern Africa is going to, uh, the impact's going to be mitigated because uh, rainfall seems to be still uh, performing relatively well in the region. I'm speaking of countries such as Zambia and Malawi that are big producers and consumers of maize, so they won't be as affected. However, countries in East Africa, as I've mentioned, because of the drought, will be hard hit. In, case, in the case of rice over the past year, whereas the maize price has doubled, the rice price has simply moved sideways. So West Africa, that's a big consumer, won't be as impacted. That's why in cases of Ghana, for instance, we haven't seen inflation accelerate as sharply. Uh, food inflation in Ghana, for instance, is still in the single digits.